Hi, I'm Zephram T21 and welcome to Adventure Ride Chat, the place where all bikes are adventure and where the chat starts here with me and continues with all of us down in that comment area. And if you are new to this segment of T21, please do consider subscribing. This video is going to be an updated video to a previous one I did on power upgrades and performance upgrades. And today I want to head specifically engine tuning, engine mapping to be precise. And I am just going to scrape the surface, I'm just going to hit one little or two little points on this. Very, very, very basic because this is a very complicated and nuanced matter that would make a series on, very, on videos just for this. And I am not a professional engine tuner. I do take my bike to professionals as I advise you to do. But still, I want to hit some topics that I think a lot of people miscomprehend or misunderstand or they just don't know. So if you know more than this, please hit me down below. I would love to talk more with you. If you don't think I hit enough points on this, down below. And if not, if this just helped you to get some ideas for you to know what to study or for you to know what to ask to the professionals, just hit me down below too. It's going to be great to chat with all of you. So on a general term, what is engine mapping? The engine mapping is going to be the AFR, the air to fuel ratio. That's going to be what your bike is going to inject the fuel according to the air. A stoichiometric, a stoichiometric AFR is going to be the perfect chemically best combustion possible for your engine. And for petrol, that number is 14.7 to 1, meaning 14.7 parts of air to one part of fuel. And I did say petrol because different fuels will have different stoichiometric AFRs. So what can we do with this and knowing this? What we can do is we can make our bikes run richer, meaning a lower AFR, or we can make our bikes go linear, meaning a higher AFR. One will increase power, the other one will increase fuel economy. But why is not the AFR that our bikes bring from stock the best one possible? Well, it is the best one possible according to the law. Our manufacturers of all bikes, of all engines, do have to produce something that's going to be the best performing engine according to the laws of the country. That's why when you buy, for instance, a power commander, on the box is going to say for race use only. They don't mean that necessarily an engine tuning or that specific device is just for racing bikes. What they mean is when you use that, when you apply that to your bike, there's a chance that your noise emissions and your O2 emissions or CO2 emissions in this case, are not going to be according to the law. So do keep that in mind when you adjust your bike. But what will you gain when you adjust your AFR? And what exactly is this in something that we can comprehend? Well, the AFR is going to be the beacon in which your bike is going to, well, guide itself exactly as a beacon E is. Let's say that you have an AFR of 14.7 to 1, which, let's face it, it's not what most people have, it's not what you want because it is very difficult to achieve and it's not going to be the best performing AFR for your bike. But again, like I said, this is just scra scraping the top, please do investigate and if not, let's talk down below. But let's say the 14.7 because that's the number I started with and that's the chemically and mathematically correct number. If you are a little bit more sensitive, you may have realized that on a cold night, your bike's gonna run differently than on a warm summer day. That is because the temperature, humidity, and air pressure changed. So what new bikes do, and they have a lot of sensors, is they are targeting 14.7, the humidity changed, the air temperature changed, so they will adjust more or less fuel to try and always keep the bike at that 14.7 number. And what we can do is when we change the engine map, now we're going to say it's 13.2, meaning it's going to be a little bit more reach, it's going to be a little bit more power, but that's going to mean that the bike now will have a new beacon, will have something new to guide itself. So what you do is you take your bike to a dyno, you take your bike to a professional, and the dyno is the machine he uses, he puts your bike on top, your bike will run as it would on the road, except now it's running on a roll, he's going to know when the bike is running, he's going to know when the spark plug is lighting your chamber, so when your air to fuel ratio is going to combust, 
and it's gonna adjust all of those things to make it, well, run better. But what is better? Better depends on what you want. If you want more torque, if you want more fuel economy, if you want a more straight and coherent line, a power line, and that means, for instance, on something like this line, you can see the red one will have a power dip on the mid-range, meaning that th this is a stock one, meaning that on that mid-range there was a power dip and the client didn't want it. So on the dyno they adjusted for a little bit more or less of AFR at that point and that power dip now disappeared. Is this a racing bike? No. This is just a normal bike where the client didn't want that, he wanted a more coherent power line and that could be achieved through a dyno. This on a very broad stroke is what an engine tuning will do. On my best advice is when you go there, when you take your bike there, if you do take your bike there, do not get hung up on the numbers. And why do I say this? Different dynos will probably have different readings either because they're different machines or they are calibrated differently. If you are using road tires or you are using knobby tires, or even within road tires, if the pressure is different, your numbers are going to be different. If the humidity, air temperature is going to be different from run to run, or from dyno run from dyno run, meaning every time the engine runs all through the revs in each gear, well, the numbers are going to change. So it's pointless for you to compare your numbers to the numbers of your mate that went to a different, rhino, a different dyno even using the same bike and the same tires at the same pressure. If the temperature was not the same, the numbers are not going to be the same. If the machine is not the same, calibrated the same way, the numbers are not going to be the same. What I advise you is focus on what you want. So do a dyno run when you get there, talk to the professional, adjust the things you need to adjust for whatever you want, more power, more fuel economy, making the line a little bit more coherent instead of having peaks, make peaks if you want them. So adjust your first run to your last run and those are the numbers you should compare, those are the numbers you should aim for. Do not compare your numbers to your neighbors or your mates numbers, unless you have some beers at the bar then brag all you want. But other than that, if you want the best performance for your engine, just look at your own engine and compare it with the beginning and the end. And again, when I say best performance, it doesn't necessarily mean the biggest amount of power, the biggest amount of torque. It just means your engine working as you want to. Again, as I said in the beginning, this is an incredibly nuanced subject. I would love down below if you guys would want me to talk about something more specific, if you guys would like a bigger series on the topic, or if you feel I said something completely wrong and you just want to tear me a new one, down below is going to be the way. And it, till then, until next Saturday, if you're not yet subscribed, please do consider subscribing, hitting that big thumbs up and that subscription bell, and I'll see you guys next Saturday.